In the early 1900s, Thomas Edison got into the battery making business. He had invented a lot of electrical devices and he knew that if he created the power supply to run those devices, he could make even more money. So he knew to make a battery you needed two different metals separated by some kind of conducting solution. We call the conducting solution an electrolyte. So he wanted to test different materials to see what would make the best battery. You want something that's powerful, that's long-lasting, that's inexpensive, and that's safe. So he sent his assistants all over the world testing and gathering materials to test them to see what would make the best battery. Um, when he finally decided that he had the best battery, best way to make it, he made the battery and started selling it. He called it the Edison E battery. He, he quickly found out that there were some problems with it. I think it was catching on fire and causing a lot of uh, destruction of the electronic devices. So he recalled that battery and went back to the drawing board to work on it some more. But since he called his first battery the E battery, after that, batteries became known by different letters. So today we have AA, AAA, C, and D. That was all started by Thomas Edison. So in a fun activity for students of all ages is to test different materials and see what kind of battery they would make. So we test combinations of metals in different electrolytes. For the electrolytes, I've got uh, to test a lime, I've got an apple, potato, an onion, a lemon, a yellow squash, a banana, we've got salt water, and we've also got Dr. Pepper, the nectar of the gods. So we'll test those different materials as electrolytes to see how they work, and for our combinations of metals, we'll use copper and zinc like we did before. So we have the copper and I've got the zinc or galvanized steel nails. We're also going to use steel, so just plain old common steel nails. And we're going to use aluminum. And you can buy aluminum nails at the uh, hardware stores. So the way this works is you can put one of each metal into the electrolyte and as long as they're not touching on the inside you'll get a voltage of each combination. So here's the potato so we've already done the copper and zinc for the potato it's reading right now about 0.9 volts let's see what happens when I do copper with aluminum. Copper and aluminum are only giving me about 0.47 volts, 0.46 something. So I don't get as much voltage with copper and aluminum. Let's try copper and steel. Ooh, not much at all, 0 0.068 volts. Copper and steel, 0 0.07. Not much voltage there. Makes you wonder, is the uh, meter reading right or not have a good connection? Oh, now it went way up, 0 0.16 volts. Not a lot of voltage there. But you notice on that with copper and aluminum, copper and zinc, copper and steel, I got a positive voltage every time. The copper was positive and the other metal was negative each time. Let's try other combinations. Here is steel and aluminum. Not much voltage, 0 0.05. Here is steel with zinc. 0.49, so about half a volt, but notice it's negative. That means that the zinc is the negative and steel is positive when it's with zinc. So steel is the negative when it's with copper, but it's the positive when it's with zinc. Let's try uh, zinc and aluminum. Zinc and aluminum is giving me a little less than half a volt. So we try the different combinations, but in the potato, the copper and zinc definitely gave us the most voltage, about 0.9. Now let's go to the apple. So there's steel, aluminum, copper, and zinc. 
So we'll try the copper and zinc first like we did before. It's also, so we're getting about half a volt, but that's, uh, reading is not steady. Like all electronic devices, sometimes you have to shake them. So about 0.58 volts. Here is steel and copper. Also about 0.56. We can try steel and aluminum. Very little voltage, 0.03. Zinc and aluminum. Very small amount of voltage, 0.02. We can try the lemon. Now most people think, oh, a lemon, that's got to give us the best voltage. That would be the prediction that most would make. Well, let's see. Copper, steel, aluminum, and zinc. So we'll try the zinc and copper first. It's up there at 0 0.85, 0 0.86 volts, just like the potato. Uh, copper and steel. 0.48 volts, copper and aluminum, 0.58 volts, aluminum and zinc, 0.28, aluminum and steel, 0.09. The apple, the potato, the lemon, the aluminum and steel all had the lowest voltage. Let's try the onion. There's my steel zinc, copper, and aluminum. So the copper and the zinc, 0.83 volts. Copper and steel, 0.37 volts. Copper and aluminum, 0.6 volts. Aluminum and steel, 0.17 volts, smallest voltage again. Aluminum and zinc, 0.24 volts. Steel and zinc, 0.39 volts. So again, the copper and zinc tended to give us the largest voltage. We'll try the squash. We've got copper, steel, aluminum, and zinc. Copper and zinc, 0.56 volts. Copper and steel, 0.2 volts. Copper and aluminum, 0.5 volts. Aluminum and steel, 0.3 volts. Aluminum and zinc, 0 0.0, not a good connection, 0.18 volts. So again, the copper and zinc gave us the highest voltage. We'll do one more. We will try the Dr. Pepper. You clip the nail to the meter. Here is aluminum and copper, giving me 0.6 volts. Let's try copper and zinc. Point four eight point five volts. Let's try zinc and steel. 0 0.06 volts. And let's try aluminum and steel. Point 0.2 volts. So what we find when we do this is that different combinations of metals and electrolytes give us different amounts of voltage. In examining these, with these materials, it does appear that the combination of metals makes a bigger difference than the electrolyte. The copper and zinc were giving us the highest voltage no matter what they were in. The aluminum and steel uh, gave us the smallest amount of voltage no matter what they were in. 
That's because the uh, properties of aluminum and steel that cause this reaction and voltage, they're not different enough. You need two different metals, and the bigger difference in those metals, the bigger voltage you're going to get. And aluminum and steel don't give us much difference. You can also make batteries that work very well out of gold and platinum. However, those materials are very expensive. Silver also. So we typically use a lot of copper and a lot of zinc. And you might have seen uh, battery commercials where they talk about Duracell, the copper top battery. So that gives us an idea of the metal that's used in that one. We also, instead of using fruit or vegetable juices, batteries have battery acid. The dry cells have a moist, pasty acid. Wet cells, like your car battery, have a liquid acid. So it's a lot of fun to try different materials and see what kind of voltages you get. And students really do enjoy this type of exploration.